All right, hi everybody. John Meadows here with my man Brett P. We just finished training chest, but we can't leave just yet. I uh, really appreciate the fact that you all watched that back video, 21 tips on, you know, just some different ways to correct your exercise form to help your back grow. Um, appreciate that. And a lot of you requested the same thing for chest. So before Brett and I get out of here today, we thought, hey, let's see if we can figure out 21 things that you could do for your chest to help. Maybe your chest isn't growing. So um, the theme I had the last, uh, the back video was really just take basic exercises, not, nothing real fancy, and try to work on your form. We're gonna do the same with chest. So I'm just gonna cover different kinds of barbell presses, dumbbell presses, dips, things like that that are real basic that most of you can do. So we're gonna start here on the bench press. So what are some things that you might be doing that would really keep your chest from growing? Um, so the, there's a lot of things that jump to mind for me. There's, so there'll be a lot of corrections on this. So let me start with, um, I call it spoon chest, inverted spoon chest. So you know how you're supposed to keep your chest elevated, right? And what happens is you'll see people pressing, particularly when they get fatigued, they'll start doing this. Their chest will just cave in. Now what happens when you do that is a lot of stress will go to your AC joint. Um, a lot of people get injuries in their AC joint because they're pressing like, like, like so. So let me show you what I mean by that. So instead of having your chest like this, you'll see people caving in like, I can't even do it. But people will come up and their chest is all caved in like that instead of being like this. This is how you want your chest right here. But they'll hunch down like that. And again, when they do that, you're taking stress off your pecs and you're putting it on your AC joint. The other thing that I know many of you have seen over the years, it's the bounce presses. So people are using so much momentum, you know, there's really not a lot of pec engagement. So you'll see people, you know, just, just bouncing the bar. Um, it's gonna be hard for you to maximize chest development when you're just using momentum and bouncing the bar. The, um, the third thing that comes to mind is your elbow angle. You know how on my back video I was talking about so much of your back work is dictated by you thinking about driving your elbows? So when your chest, I see a lot of people, I actually see people instructing others to do this, to flare their elbows out like that. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I don't like that. Number one, it it's puts a lot, a lot of stress right here on this connective tissue, uh, which obviously is what can tear and you can have a pec tear, you can have an injury there. So I see people with their elbows flared out like that and it just puts so much pressure right here. There's really no pressure on the rest of your pec. Creates injuries, everything it does, it's really hard on your rotator cuff to do that. So what I'd rather see you do is drop your elbows down. I'm not, I don't mean in like a tricep press. So instead of going here or here, you're somewhere in between. So let me show you what I mean. So I don't like this out here, and I'm not saying to bench like that. What I'm saying to do is kind of drop your elbows down in between. So instead of here, just drop them down right there. That's going to keep you safer, and that's going to actually put a lot more stress on your entire pack instead of just that one area right there. All right, another one I see. Bodybuilders like to uh, incorporate power, powerlifting into the routines. Number one, I think that's excellent. But the form on certain exercises should be modified for a bodybuilder. You know, you see a, if you see a powerlifter bench, a lot of times what they're doing is they're getting their feet under, under them. They're getting a really wide grip with the bar. And they're really shortening their range of motion. You've got to remember, a powerlifter's goal is to get as much weight from point A to point B as they can. That's it. So that is not your goal as a bodybuilder. It's not just to get the most weight from point A to point B, despite what some people think. It's to get maximum chest activation, have some range of motion. So instead of this powerlifting form, where your feet are under you, and you're right here doing this, I'd rather see you get a medium grip right here. And, and get your feet out here, okay? Medium grip. Drop the weight down with your elbows, just like I said, right here, not here, here, okay? See how much more range of motion that is? 
Okay, and speaking of range of motion, I do want to mention range of motion too. Um, in addition to the bounce, um, I don't think a lot of people have much range of motion on their uh, barbell bench press. So you don't necessarily need to lock it out, but I remember one of the gyms I went to, there was a guy there who was, I mean, he was a big guy, but he used to always talk about how he was benching 315 for 20 reps, which to me, I was like, man, that's really good. And what he was doing was just this little range of motion like this. Um, <laughs> it's just barely two inches of range of motion away from an ISO hold, really. Um, so I want you to get a good range of motion, okay? Now you don't have to lock them out because the lockout is primarily tricep. And any powerlifter will tell you that. So instead of doing this, I want you to get a good range of motion. Come up about four fifths of the way, okay? I do want you to touch your chest. Touch your chest unless you have some kind of pre-existing injury that doesn't allow that. So all the way down, three quarters, four fifths of the way up, right there, okay? Those are, those are some tips on how to maximize your form doing the bench press so you can build better pecs. Okay, now let's go to a different version. I'm on a decline bench now. A lot of the decline benches I see are just way too steep. I had this set up so that it's too steep. Um, when you are set up at this kind of angle, it creates a lot of stress in your shoulder joint, your rotator cuff. In fact, I'm not even gonna do it with an empty bar. So if you're, if you're all the way down this steep, this kind of angle on your shoulder is not good. I don't like that. The second tip is, actually, I do wanna show you where the bar goes. So, let me get, the, can you hand me this bar, Brett? <clears throat> actually, I do need to show you this. Got it. Okay, so it's really important where the bar actually comes down on a decline. Uh, in particular, as I'm going through these tips, you're gonna see how there's so many opportunities to hurt your shoulders. And when your shoulders are banged up, you can't train your chest right. So I'm hoping that we can avoid those things. So now, when you are doing a decline, I wanna see the bar hit right here. Okay, right here's the bottom of my pec, right here. What I see a lot of people doing is I see them coming up here. Again, just devastating on your shoulder joint, just asking for injury. Or I see them coming down here on their belly, which turns it into a front delt exercise, right? So I want you to lower it right here, okay? And remember the form on the bench press, none of this wide stuff, drop your elbows down a little bit, right there. That's what I want to see. Okay. So now the next question is, what is the proper angle on the decline? I'll give you my opinion, I'll show you over here. So I like to do a slight decline. A slight decline has always felt good to me. If you wanna go do some research, you'll actually see that a lot of the studies show that a slight decline gives you maximal chest activation. Um, but I just do it because it feels better. This is the only decline I like. Like just 25, or just put a 25 pound plate under there, okay? Just that little bit, you'll feel a lot more in your chest. So right here. So if you're doing a barbell, same thing. I just want that slight decline. If you're doing dumbbells, same thing. So whether you're doing dumbbell, barbell, Smith machine, I just want that slight decline right there. So that's how I want you to do your decline presses. Now, let's talk about incline dumbbell presses. Um, this is certainly a great exercise. Now, you know how I said I like a slight decline? For, there's a little bit of variability on the incline you can have. You could go slight, you could go medium, or you could, go even, you could even actually go high. Um, if I'm doing a barbell press, I tend to like more of a slight incline, but on a dumbbell press, um, you can vary how high you put the incline. The key is, it's just how your elbows are traveling. And it's how you have your, kind of your rib cage and your body set up. So let me give you an example here. Let me grab, you just grab some 35s. So if you want to get your, your chest, and a lot of people are doing these specifically for their upper chest. What I want you to do is, first thing you want is you want your chest lifted, okay? You don't want that flat inverted spoon chest. The transfer stress to your AC joint. Remember that. 
So you want your rib cage expanded and your chest lifted. Now, you've got to have your elbows travel in the right path if you really want to maximize upper chest development. So if you're up here, guess where the stress is going based on what we've shown you so far. <clears throat> Hopefully you, you grab this area right there. That's where all the stress is going. But if you want more in your upper pec, instead of going here, now you want to go here, okay? So you're coming down like this, okay? And you're coming up right here, right here. That as opposed to this. Okay, that does work your chest. I just want your, I just want it to, your angles, your elbows to be down a little bit right here, okay? Right there. So none of this, keep your chest lifted. And you'll notice, you'll notice whether you play, play around with the angle. You'll notice whether you're here, here, or here. You can still basically get a lot of that same motion by the way your elbows are traveling. And theoretically on any, any movement for chest, having the elbow path feel like that's gonna get you a little more upper chest. So on the incline dumbbell presses, I think that the, probably the things I see people mess up the most is probably their elbow angle if they're really focused on upper chest. And the other thing is just, again, that caving in thing. That caving in thing is not good. Good way to hurt yourself. Uh, another thing I wanna throw in here when you're doing the dumbbell press, grab the dumbbell right in the middle, okay? So right here, watch what happens. Watch what happens if I grab it on the inside. You see what just happened to my wrist? Watch what happens if I grab the dumbbell on the outside. See what happens on my wrist there? So make sure you've got the dumbbell right in the middle. Okay? Right here. Now, I do tend to think that, I, okay, I got another one I wanna throw out here. I do tend to think that most of your dumbbell pressing you should probably not lock out. It's just so much try at the very end. Um, I'd rather keep stress on your chest and only come up three quarters of the way. So that would be another thing I would try to do if I were you to maximize chest development. All right, I hear we're in the good lighting now. So another really basic exercise for your chest is dips. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to do these. So a lot of people will, will do them like, like so, like that. I don't wanna say that's bad, it's not bad. It's just that that form, is putting more stress on your front delt and your triceps. If you're watching this video, you're probably more interested in your chest development. So there's a way you can alter your dips. Do them more like how Vince Garanti used to do them. So instead of here, you come down like that, I actually want you to flare your elbows this way, okay? So I'd rather see you do this. See how my elbows are flared? That's a lot more chest and it's a lot less shoulder. And I think anecdotally through the years, people have probably put a little bit too much stress on their shoulders doing dips this way too. I see, I hear a lot of people tell me they can't do dips and when I see their form, that's how they're doing them. As soon as we switch their form, they're like, oh, that's not so bad. So that's a way you can really um, improve your chest recruitment doing dips. Another thing on these dips is where your feet are going. And this again, this is another Vince Garanda thing from back in the old days. Vince used to have people put their feet out in front. I personally like that a lot. I feel like it's putting more stress on your chest too. I feel like if your feet are behind you, it's tilting you forward. But if your feet are out in front of you, and it's a little harder to do them that way, but once you um, get used to them, it's no problem. It's just hard at first because you're not used to it. Your body might want to tilt forward if you've been doing them that way. So elbows flaring, feet out in front, okay? If you do those two things on your dips, I think you'll find it works your chest a lot better. Uh, we have a fly machine here, and this, this is another thing I see. So when you're doing a machine fly, you want to be slight bend in your elbows, and pulling your hands together and flexing your pecs. What I see on this, and also cable crossovers, you see this a lot. I call it the, the, the butterfly form. I see people doing them like this. So let me show you what I mean. So instead of going like this, which is a ton of chest, I see them doing this. They're, they're coming up like that. And now guess where a lot of the stress went? Right here, that's not a good thing. And I can, I can feel this a little bit in my outer pecs, but 
This contraction compared to this is two different things. Uh, and again, I really see that a lot on cable crossovers. So make sure when you're doing a fly, you're not like this, okay? Get your arms out, slide bend in your elbows, and pull your arms across. That's what part of what your pecs do is they do this. This right here, I don't like, okay? So make sure you do your machine flies with that technique. You want your hands lined up right outside your body. I don't want to see you here, and I don't want to see you here. So make sure your seat height, make sure your seat height is right. So right here, so you can pull right across, as opposed to down here, or up here, okay? Those actually will almost, they don't force you, but makes, you, makes it much more likely you're gonna get that butterfly technique. The other thing, um, it's just like the bench presses. You're supposed to have your chest elevated, right? Right here. See how my chest is elevated? And I see people going way too heavy on these, so guess what they do? They get the inverted spoon chest on this too. So instead of doing this, I see them doing this, right? Their, their chest is all caved in. And when I, when I just changed that and did that, I could literally feel all the stress go right here. It all went right here. Try that, try that. Do it with good form and then try it when you're all hunched over. No hunching, no inverted spoon chest, all right? So there's three things there. Okay, now I know some of you maybe don't have training partners, so you rely on the Smith machine. So I do want to throw a couple things in here. Um, the Smith machine can be a fantastic chest builder, but it can also wreck your shoulders. So what I want you to be careful of is too much internal rotation is the big one. And let me show you what I mean by that. So basically what I mean is when you press, your shoulders are coming from a position where they're internally rotated. So that means that the bar is coming down too low. So watch this right, wait, let me, let me scoot back a little bit. Okay. Now watch what happens to my shoulders I'm coming down. You see that, you see where my shoulders are at? That's bad. But I see a lot of people doing that. They come down all the way down here and as, watch as I'm coming down. See how my shoulders rolling like that? That's really hard on your shoulders, your rotator cuff. That's a good way to injure yourself. What I would rather see is I'd rather see this. I'd rather you come down right here. Now you don't need to come down all the way. In fact, coming down all the way will also put a lot of stress on your rotator cuff. So about right here, I'm in a real powerful position. I want you to look at how my elbows are lined up. They're not this way. They're not this way. They're, they're in a perfect, they're in a very, they're in a very strong position right here. This is awesome for your chest, very good. So, so that's the main thing is don't come down like this. And it also applies uh, in terms of external rotation. So you don't wanna come down too high over your head so you're externally rotated. But I don't really see people do that. The main thing I see people doing uh, incorrectly here is they just lower the bar way too low. And, and then they say, well, I hurt my shoulder. The Smith machine sucks. No, the Smith machine doesn't suck. Your form sucked. That's, um, that's how you got hurt. Um, so I did want to show you that because again, I know a lot of you um, train by yourself and you probably use a Smith machine. Now let's say you're on the incline, incline barbell bench. The other thing, this, those rules all apply on that too, but I don't think you're as likely to do that ro rotation on the internal, or the internal rotation on the incline bench or you just drop the bar, <laughs> it wouldn't feel good. But the range of motion part is very important. If you notice, uh, when we did the bench presses, I said, make sure you take the bar all the way down, touch your chest. I don't like to do that on incline presses. I like to bring it down to like right here. I feel like down here, now you're creating some, some stress that may not be healthy for you. So when I'm doing the incline barbell presses, you'll notice I keep the reps about an inch or two above my chest. Now I will tell you that I used to have banged up shoulders all the time all the time and one of the things that allowed my shoulders to feel better was when i just quit taking it down all the way and i would stop an inch or two away from my chest my chest actually started growing more so you know a lot of times i get people that make fun of my range of motion on inclines but for me it was really good it saved my shoulders and my chest got bigger and thicker and i felt better so when you're on the incline barbell or even on the smith machine you don't need to come down all the way 
Um, I would cut them an inch or two short just for your shoulder health. Okay, another thing um, that applies to any kind of barbell bench, incline bench, even dumbbells, um, shoulder packing. So many of us, myself included, were always taught to get your shoulders down and back as low as you can go. So down, get them as down as far as you can go. Pack those shoulders down like that, okay? That's what we were taught. Now, what's happened is a lot of people have developed shoulder problems through the years from that technique. And I gotta give credit to uh, Chasm at N1. He's been kind of the guy who's been trying to teach everybody to not do that. So credit to him, this wasn't my idea. But when you're packed down like that, your scapula, you have, you have uh, the, the rotation of your scapula is not what it should be. We could do an entire video on that. Long story short is you're not even getting maximal pec contractions. Your back packed down so much, you can't even, your shoulders, your humerus isn't even moving forward uh, a whole lot. So what I would say is, don't worry about getting your shoulders packed down so much. Just stay tight and just get a nice little static arch. Okay, so little static arch right there and just stay tight right there. Now when I come up, I'm getting a, a good, good pack activation right there as opposed to, as opposed to this where I'm not getting the pec activation and more importantly in the long term i think your shoulders are going to be healthier if you let everything move just don't overdo it and get into the inverted spoon chest technique where you're then you're caving in because now i see people taking chasm's advice and they're saying no you want your humus to roll forward for a full pack contraction like look let's not get crazy here if you cave your chest and do that that's not good either you want to be right in between so for shoulder health um and again so much of what we talked about today is revolving around keeping your shoulders healthy and not moving them in such a way where the stress is coming off your pecs and into your rotator cuff excessively. That is, that is one of the bigger things with chest development. Um, and the shoulder joint itself is very complex. I mean, it's not just a straight hinge, hinge joint. It, it moves all, all around. So you gotta be careful with your shoulders. Um, Anyway, so no shoulder packing. Just stay tight, get a little bit of a static arch, keep your sternum elevated, and you're in good position, okay? All right, so there are a couple other things I want to throw out. Um, one of them is intensity. So there's a lot of debate um, on volume and intensity out there, and you know, how hard should you go? Should you go to failure? Should you always have reps in reserve? I know where I stand on it. I, um, I feel like people don't necessarily push hard enough. I feel like I'd rather see somebody go to failure, but you have to be ju judicious about it. I don't believe you should go to failure on every set. So if you're doing, let's say four exercises for chest and you're doing say three to four sets, I don't think you can truly go to failure 12 to 16 times. I mean, you probably could and if you're really advanced, Maybe you could, but even then, man, I can't, I personally couldn't do 16 sets to failure for chest. So what I like to see people do is work up to one or two sets per exercise where they go to complete failure. Now, going to failure with dumbbells versus barbells versus a machine is where you have to be smart. And you're not gonna learn this in a book. You learn this sometimes the hard way, like me, through experience. So going to failure with a barbell is very dangerous. So if you're going down, you're repping on the bench, and then you're just stuck and you're getting ugly form, you're asking for an injury, you're asking for it. So on something like a barbell incline, flat, or decline, once someone does the last rep they can do with perfect form, I have them rack it. Don't keep trying until somebody has to pick the bar up off of you, okay? Now, let's talk about a machine. Like let's say the fly machine, you know, Brett and I did use the fly machine a lot. You go to failure, then what happens if you have your, your, your partner help you? You get a few more force reps, then maybe do an iso hold. You're in a position of safety, so now you can really tax the muscle. And what you'll see with a lot of my programs, 
with, is with the barbell stuff, I won't take you past failure. Just get as many clean reps as you can, rack it. But then as we get through the other exercises that are a little safer, now not only go to failure, we go beyond failure. We want pain, we want you to work through pain, good pain, burning. When the burning starts, your set starts. So, and dumbbells, dumbbells. So you go up, you go to failure, then maybe you can do even a couple partials. Again, you're not in a position where you're gonna kill your connective tissue. So the barbell stuff, I wouldn't go to complete failure or past it. The dumbbells, you know, you can go to, you can go to failure there. Um, maybe even do a drop set or whatever. You don't like machines, now you're in a position where you can really go well beyond failure. So you have, I think that using those intensity techniques intelligently is a very good move. And I know people, and it drives me crazy, are being told to ne don't do any drop sets, don't go to failure. It's just laziness, it's just laziness. I can tell you that doing a little bit of that stuff goes a long way. You know, I might do one or two drop sets for the whole workout. And then I might do one or two sets where I throw some partials on. So I'm not advocating doing that on every set, but I think it's important that your intensity is high enough or no matter how good your form is, you're never gonna really push yourself to grow. The other thing I wanna mention is exercise sequencing. This is another thing you don't really learn in books. Um, another thing I learned the hard way. I used to always come into the gym, I used to bench press first. Even though my form was pretty good, um, other than the shoulder packing I used to do, um, injuries all the time. So what I did was I started putting my barbell pressing second, sometimes even third. And I noticed that when I got to the exercise, it felt better. My joints didn't hurt. I got more out of the exercise in terms of growth and development. Now maybe I was a little bit fatigued from your first exercise, so I couldn't do quite as much weight, but that's just because of fatigue. It's not because you're actually getting weaker. Um, and actually that made a huge difference for me. That was one of the biggest things for me that helped my chest. So I would tell you that Exercise sequencing is a big deal. You know, I'd rather see someone start with a dumbbell or a machine, then do their barbell work, and then come back to dumbbells or machines and really start pushing those sets past failure. So that's the other thing. And then one final tip for the day. Um, a lot of people are all oh, machines suck, they're terrible, you should use all barbells. And then some people are like, oh, machines are good, they allow you to work through safe ranges of motion, you should never really do the heavy barbell stuff. You know, the, the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. Um, I can't imagine not doing any barbell stuff. Um, a low incline barbell bench is my favorite exercise for chest. And then my second favorite exercise is probably a slight decline dumbbell bench. But you wanna have a good mix. I think the, 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 the sequencing is what's more important. Um, that's what I would rather see people do. Uh, so don't do all machines, don't do all barbells, have a good mix. They, machines allow you to go through a nice full range of motion. Dumbbells allow you to go through a nice full range of motion safely. So anyways, I, I hope these tips help. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, try some of these tips out. Let me know if your chest workout felt better. So until next time, we'll see you later.